I will review the Nintendo Switch OLED system today in this video and I will try to answer all the burning questions that you have. Is it worth it? Should you get it even though you have the regular Switch or the Switch Lite? How is the screen? Do you even see any difference? Does the games play better? How is the kickstand? What is the deal with everything? Now the original Switch it came out in 2017 and no the old OLED is not a new system, uh, it is just a revision of the old Switch. This is not a Switch Pro, it doesn't do anything more than this one does. It is, in short, a new screen. But let me go into details. This is from 2017 and then the Switch Lite came and that came out in year on the screen because I will have to Google that. But I have to mention that this was provided to me by Bergsala, Nintendo of Norway, for review purposes. Like I said, the Switch OLED is not a Switch Pro, so it's nothing game-changing. By that I also mean that you can play all this old Switch games from your older, these two cons consolers, uh, on the OLED. It's not any exclusivity within games and such for the OLED. Let's just have that said. First off, I wish it was a Switch Pro. But in my predictions, I don't think Nintendo will announce a Switch Pro for at least another year so that they can sell this and milk some money out of that. <laughs> kidding. Not really kidding though, but from a marketing perspective, it would be not smart to announce a Switch Pro straight after they have announced a Switch OLED. They are going to let this ride for a year, maybe even two, and then they will announce a Switch Pro. So we will have to do with these consoles until then. Now let's go over what's different. The screen is a tiny bit bigger and the kickstand is also bigger, more stable on the table. The console is also a tiny, tiny bit longer on the black, like the actual console, not including the Joy-Cons. The Joy-Cons, they are the same. All of your Joy-Cons, they will work on your OLED, but Right off the bat, I can tell you that old accessories that are based on the original Switch, they do not work because they do not fit. Simply put, they do not fit. This, for example, is the Fixture S1. I have used it a lot and I'm waiting for a new OLED fixture. I will definitely get that. And since the console is longer, like I said, old accessories won't work, including the Skull & Crow grip that I have on my old Switch. So I have also had to order a new set of Skull & Co grip. So that is coming soon, looking forward to that because I have gotten so used to playing a Switch with a grip. And playing on the OLED without a grip is like playing on a naked Switch. Feels really weird. I can't play on a naked Switch. So in short, old accessories don't necessarily work on your OLED if you decide to pick up an OLED. Now let's look closer into what I found to be different within this OLED system. And that is deep within the options, I found some settings that I don't recognize. It's called console screen vividness. Yeah, that is a new setting. Actually, I found the default setting to be better than the super vivid one because that feels like it is oversaturated. So in my opinion, I found the default setting in this setting to be the best one. And it comes with being set to vivid. Just gonna have that mentioned also. You can also change the entire screen to grayscale, inverted colors and such, but that is also a feature within the old Switch, so it's not new to the OLED. If you guys remember, I made a video when I got, whoa, <laughs> my Switch Lite, that it is not necessarily smart to have two Switches because hours played is stored within each controller and that didn't transfer when I changed my switch and, you know, jumping between switches, anyways. But this time with the OLED, my hours played record is actually transferred. I take that back. It only transferred some, and it seems random. With the OLED, the audio is also noticeably better. 
The battery is also better. I play almost always in handheld mode, but actually the first time that I sat down with my OLED, <laughs> I had it charged up to 100, I swear, and I played Shin Megami Tensei 5, this game, also provided from Nintendo, thank you. I'm currently playing it. And I feel like it wasn't many hours that I sat in game. And certainly I was charging out, and I, f I felt, anyway, that the battery didn't last long, but that wasn't the Switch OLED's fault. It turned out that I had a five hour session within Shin Megami Tensei, but that went by so quickly. So, uh, no. So the battery is going to last about five hours, give or take. I mean, I don't know how bright I had my screen at the time, which also affects how long the battery is lasting. This Switch has a new dock. The OLED also works on the old dock. And the new docking station is white. So what I immediately thought is that for the lucky people that actually have a PlayStation 5, the white one, yeah. I have still not gotten a PlayStation 5. That is something that I've said on this channel for the entire year. I'm still looking for a PlayStation 5, but I can't find one. What I was trying to say is that this one will look very nice next to a PS5. The screen is made of OLED and that means in short and explained very easily the blacks in the screen looks deeper and nicer and blacker like the black looks more black and the screen looks better in real life than this screen for example. This screen is also very good, I have to say. You all know that. I have never complained about the original Switch's screen. So the OLED was never something that I needed. I was very happy with my old Switch. And if it wasn't for me getting a review copy of the OLED, I wouldn't have gotten the OLED. And that is the simple truth. Because I happen to be, and I still am, very happy with my original Switch. But now I have switched over to the OLED. Okay, so we have gotten to the section of how do I feel about it. So the screen, it is bigger. I can see that it is bigger, but it is not a very big difference in size. Let me have that said. I don't really, really, really deep down feel that this is a revolutionary bigger and better screen. It is slightly bigger. It is slightly better and Unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna say it. I don't really notice too much of a difference when I'm playing in handheld mode unless I am actually comparing them next to each other. Because when I'm playing a game on my OLED, I, yeah, I may notice at first that the screen was a tiny bit bigger and a tiny bit, I don't know, better looking. But that is only for the first couple of minutes and then I feel like I'm just as well playing on this. The difference isn't night and day, it is very subtle. I don't know if anyone else has, you know, said this the way that I'm saying it right now, but that is just how I feel. Actually, I think they should have gone with the OLED screen from the beginning. Why didn't they? But yeah, like comparing them next to each other, I don't know if it's something wrong with my eyes, but I don't really see a big difference. So how do I feel about the OLED? I like it, okay? I do like it. And I will only use my OLED from now on. Thank you so much, Nintendo, for sending this over to me. I am not taking that for granted. I was very surprised. So if you are on the edge, should you get it or should you not? Let's look at the yes and no's. The pros and cons. So on the no side, I'm gonna have to say that if you already own a Switch, you don't need to upgrade. And if you mostly play on the TV in docked mode, you don't need to upgrade. And if you are already feeling happy with your original Switch, you don't need to upgrade. And no, you don't have to upgrade if you can't really afford to upgrade. Use your old Switch. It is very good still. So that was the no side. Let's look at the yes side. I say yes to buying any Switch OLED if you don't have a Switch to begin with. This one would be the best choice to jump into this wonderful system. Another yes is if you can afford to upgrade, then yes. If money is not an issue for you, it is a nice upgrade. It's a fun upgrade. Another yes is if you play mostly in handheld, 
like I do. I almost never play on the TV. That means that I'm looking at this OLED screen. So that makes it more appealing to me to have the best screen handheld wise out of all the switches. I also want to say that the Switch in general is such a good console that in fact I dedicated my entire YouTube channel to be a Switch channel currently. Gaming slash Switch channel. This channel was not originally a gaming channel, but the Switch made me switch over to having a Switch channel, oh my god. The Switch has such an impressive library of games by now. Too many games, in fact, to keep up with. Right now, however, I am playing Shin Megami Tensei. It is fun. It's like a more difficult version of Pokemon. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is my first Shin Megami Tensei game. I went into this game blindly. I knew nothing. But it turns out that it is about a war between angels and demons and you are transferred down to the netherworld and you are befriending demons to fight alongside you down there. So far in the game it's just a really big wasteland. You can see this is the map currently. I am about seven hours into the game. It seems to have a very fun gameplay loop so far. This was the game of the year for a lot of people already, so that gotta count for something. I was not planning on picking this game up. This was sent to me by Bergsala and I'm very happy that they did, so that I can tell all of you guys that this is such an exciting game. And you have probably heard about it already, and people are saying that it is the game of the year and all of that, but it's very unique. I don't feel like it reminds me of anything else that I have played except for maybe like Pokemon because you befriend these demons and they are actually fun to collect, okay? You collect demons and you do that by talking to them in combat, like bribing them sometimes also to make them join you and that concept is very exciting. The game is also very hard and I feel but this difficulty is what I actually missed having in Brilliant Diamond. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, uh, which I found to be too easy. Now this is a challenge and I know that I am a person that says often that I play games on easy. Well, it turns out that sometimes too easy can be too easy. I often play on easy, yes I do, I even play on easy in this game, it's called casual. But that is proving to be a very big challenge, even though it says casual. But I know that they just released an even easier difficulty in the eShop, but I am not getting that. I am gonna continue my save file in casual, because it turns out that that is the perfect difficulty for me. I have the incentive to do grinding, to grind levels and fuse together two demons to get a stronger demon. It is a very fun gameplay loop. I am enjoying my time so far very much in Shin Megami Tensei. I've already recommended it to, to people in my life. It is looking very good. It is performing great. The music actually caught me off guard. It is very unique, I like the combat music. Other than that, the game is pretty straightforward. So it is very much about customizing your demons to do very well in battles. And there are elemental weaknesses. And you should use the spyglass item on every single demon that you encounter. That is gonna show their strengths and weaknesses. And that is gonna help you so much out. Highly recommend using that item all the time. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy Shin Megami Tensei 5. I can say that if you enjoy what I just told you about the game, it is a good game and I don't think you can go wrong by picking that game up. Now when it comes to the OLED, you're gonna have to decide for yourself with my two lists. That was the yes list and the no list and uh, it's gonna be good either way. The old switch is good, the OLED is good. Every Switch is good, so I stand by that. I'm gonna so play that now. Now I have some Patreon shoutouts going out to Raimon Andreasen, PDS301, Chip Rowland, Tobias Eisenworth, Norbert Sonsweirel, Callum Johnston, Antoine Fontaine, Vanessa Loftland, Amber Roche, Amira Bara, and Thorn. 
and a special shout out to Jam Jam, my good friend. Now thank you so much for watching and I hope you will enjoy the Christmas times and the New Year's and all of the times. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later! OLED video. There you are. The OLED video. I have my notes for my OLED video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Oh my god. Okay, so <clears throat> back to my normal voice. <laughs> have me a coffee like.